How's it going everyone, Zero Kimchi here, your source for WinLater news and gameplays. Welcome again to WinLater 101, yet another Steam Guide video. It is time for a new Steam Guide as my previous video proved to be unsatisfactory. On this one I will be guiding you through every step I do to get Steam working on WinLater. I will be showcasing Steam on a Snapdragon 8 generation 2 device without root which I have not tried before so I don't know what to expect. Let's jump right in. First a little bit of background as to why I'm doing another Steam video. Reportedly there are two issues with running Steam on WinLater. According to Peace Blaster, ever since Android 10, Android limits what kind of network stats app can see. This is why users when attempting to boot Steam with any startup services other than aggressive mode won't get past the updating window. Using aggressive mode allows you to get past it and load up Steam. But since aggressive mode does not allow service.x to load, it will mean that a lot of games, games won't be able to load either. The second issue, which recently appeared with a recent Steam update, even if you use the aggressive service mode, Steam would still crash at certain points. To fix this, you need to downgrade Steam, which I will provide the method to do so. All of this can be prevented by simply rooting. I understand not many can do so, and unfortunately for those people, meaning no Steam or very little compatibility for games. Let's start with how to set up a container on Steam. First, you need to know for the method that I use, you need access to a computer that has Steam. If you do not own a computer, then you could, in theory, use the available old Steam built on Longjungju's GitHub repository. There are also several forks available from Ajay and Coughing Colors that do different things to run Steam. However, I don't use those. I use my own method and that's what I'll be showing in this video. First, download the WinLater Corefronts pack off of Coffin Colors GitHub repository. The link is in the description of the video below. Place it anywhere you can find easily and, un and unpack it. We'll need this later. Simply, win simply download WinLater Corefronts pack.zip. I already downloaded it, so you can go ahead. On your computer, navigate to your Steam directory, select all the files and folders in here except Steam apps. This folder contains all your installed games and you do, not, you do not want to pack it and transfer them along or it will take a billion years to transfer and later unpack. I would also suggest transferring it through Wi-Fi since the bandwidth these days on Wi-Fi is much larger than USB if you got good Wi-Fi that is. So right click and pack it into a RAR package or you can also do zip. I will do RAR. After you have transferred your packed Steam to your device, unpack it. However, make sure that your Steam is exited otherwise uh, you will get errors while, unpack uh, while packing it. After having unpacked the archive, copy the first command line I placed in the description of the video. This serves to downgrade Steam to a working version. And in your preferred file browser, create a text file in the root directory of Steam and paste it in. So we go to, to the root directory of Steam, create a text file, I would suggest to name it as so, and paste it in. Then save. Finally, change the extension to dot bat. Okay. Next, again in the description of the video, copy the second command line. This serves to start Steam and do the same thing as the other bat files, just name it differently. Probably a Steam start. And then change the extension again to bat file. Let's now set up WinLater, create a container and set it up. Navigate to the contents menu. and install all the latest releases of the modules Box64, DXVK, Wine and Turnip. I used Wine 9.21 as the main compat layer. I have placed every latest release in the description of the video. They are all installed the same way. Tap on con uh, install content, OK. Browse to your WCP file. So we're installing Wine 9.21. Y9.21, so select it, 
let it install continue and well i i already have it installed but uh if for you it it will succeed don't worry about it after all that is on after all after you've installed all the modules navigate to the settings menu make sure that box 64 the latest box 64 that you just installed is selected then click on apply now let's create a container and call it whatever you want i'll just do test and then select the the wine that you just installed apply all this will take a while depending on your device let's go back to edit and its settings make sure the graphics driver turn up is selected and change it to the latest turn up that you just installed okay dx dx wrapper should be dxvk and again change it to the latest version 2.6 then audio driver, I like to set it to pulse audio. I prefer dark theme. Selecting a GPU model here probably does not matter for Steam. This is mostly to expose graphic driver features to the games, such as FSR, if the game supports that, that is. It will also let games detect the recommended settings for that GPU. Uh, so that means I always set it to 3070. And that's it for this tab. In Win Components, we do nothing. In Environment, I like to set Mango Hut enabled and delete the XVK. Then we go to Advanced Settings, Box 64 Preset, change it to Performance, and then Startup Selection. We'll start with Normal Selection first because when we first boot container, we need the the prompt that uh, asks you to install Mono. And if you use aggressive mode on the first time you boot your container after having created it, that prompt will not show up. All right, so apply and let's now boot it up. You will receive this prompt to install Mono. Go ahead and install it. If you rooted your device, you can skip to the next timestamp. After this is done, quit the container and navigate to the advanced settings and change the startup selection to aggressive. Select apply and then boot it up again. Now let's set up wine the way I do it. This works for Steam and most games provided they are modern games. For old games, you might have to perform specific tweaks. So, navigate to the start menu, system tools, and install Gecko. Install. Go back to the start menu, registry, GStreamer, 1GS streamer enabled registry. No, there will appear no prompt, but it succeeds, don't worry about it. Then to runtime libraries, and start off with DirectX 2010 BAT. Next, back to runtime libraries and install all VC runtimes. This one might take a while. <sighs> okay, finally, back to start menu, runtime libraries and install physics graphic driver. Accept license, next. And finish. Start menu again. Runtime libraries and LAV 0.78. Next, next, next. Don't create shortcuts. Next, next. Install. Finally. 
finish start menu and go to patches kx audio this fixes audio issues start off with install x audio bat there we go and then go back and install every registry except for disable of course And with this, WinLayer should be good to go for almost anything. Now for Steam, the first thing I like to do after all this is move Steam to the C drive and make it load faster. So you go to the D drive where your Steam is, tap on Steam, and then copy on the uh, top, right co uh, top left corner, then go to C drive and just paste it here. If you rooted your device, you can skip to the next timestamp. Now it's time to downgrade Steam. Navigate to the Steam directory and run Steam downgrade bat you previously created. So Steam. Now let's run the downgrader. Might take a while. See, a prompt appears stating that it's downloading a update, which is an older version of Steam. And after this is done, it will automatically exit and now you can run the start steam bat to boot it up. Alright, it's installing the update of course. So now it's installing the update. And then it will automatically close. There we go. And now you can run steam start bat to boot up steam. So let's do that. This might take a while to boot up depending on the device. Ignore the task manager if it's empty, like this. It's possible the Steam still will boot up eventually. If Steam boots and the UI with no fonts appears, which is no good, then you'll have to install WinLater Core Fonts Pack we downloaded earlier. To do this, navigate to the root directory. Let's close this down first. I mean the root directory of uh, WinLater Core Fans Pack. Go to the first folder. Now go to edit on the upper left corner. Select all. Then back. Copy. Go to the Z drive. And paste. Then tap three times yes. I won't do that because I already installed this. Then go back and enter the second folder. This one. And install those three regs registries one by one. And that's it. You don't need to do the other uh, fixes in the other folders. After that's done, go back to the Steam folder and run steam once again and once the login window appears you you can log in as normal if you have another device with uh with the what's it called the steam with the yeah with the steam app installed you can log in by using the qr code that is the most recommended way to be honest it can take a while for it to appear and there we go once the Steam login screen, you will see that the fonts will appear and it's possible that it may crash one, once again. Uh, you can just boot it up again and then it'll stay put. Uh, now you can log in. I will use my phone to log in through via the QR code. And it's logging in. Close the Steam app. <laughs> A 
let it completely load. And there we go. It's working. And now you can do whatever you want. You can download your, your any game of your library and it will work just fine. Now if Steam crashes before showing the login screen completely and it keeps keeps crashing in a loop, try restarting your device and boot Steam again. I came across this issue while recording this video. Restarting the, the device fixed it for me. Also, the next time you start uh, Steam, it crashes while loading. It's possible it might still be loading and you will notice the tray icon in the bottom right corner. Uh, right here. Simply double click on it and it will load up fine. And that's it. I'm going to check real quick if Metal Gear Solid The Phantom Pain would run on an unrooted setup. I already changed the preset to the proper one, which I showed in my Phantom Pain video. So, so let's see if this works. I think nothing's happening, guys. I don't think it's gonna work. Hmm. Maybe give it another minute. I think it's Jover, guys. No. No. I don't think it works. So, yeah. Anyway, that's all I've got for today's video. And conclusion so far is, you need to root to run Steam games properly, especially the Phantom Pain. The good news is this might be partially fixed as Peace Blaster stated, so hopefully we might see a fix for this on, on future Winlater forks. Let, let me know what you think in the comments below, feel free to recommend a game for testing, make sure to dislike, share and subscribe if you like this video, like if you dislike this video. Thank you for watching, see you next time.